Good morning, humans. How is everyone doing today? Um, I hope it's not too bad. Uh, welcome to week two of coronavirus updates. Um, I hope everyone's not going crazy staying at home. Uh, I know it's a little intense, but we'll make it through. Only two more weeks of school left, um, and then you can have as much fun as you so desire. Um, and so... You should theoretically, as of Monday at 9.30 a.m., have received your midterm. Um, we tested it out over the weekend, and most people were able to put up the um, crowd mark practice exam with no problem. There was a couple minor things, um, which I think we resolved with almost everyone, so we should be okay. Um, so remember, this is due Friday. So you have from Monday until Friday to work on it. Take your time. If you have other exams, worry about those first. Um, and do this kind of when you have time. Um, I just ask, don't try to find the answers online and don't um, talk with any other people about it. Um, I mean, I'm trusting you all to not cheat on the final exam. You can use your notes. I don't mind if you use your notes. Use your notes. Um, so yeah, use your notes for the exam. Use your notes for midterm two. What I ask is please don't talk with people. Don't talk with others. And don't look up answers online. Obviously, I'm not there to double check. Um, but I'm trusting you all to not. Yeah. Um, and I believe in all of you. And I know you can all handle this. So just take your time and work on it. Um, and you should be okay. Um, it shouldn't take longer than a day, so don't worry too much. I've given you five days um, mainly so that you have more, like, less time to stress. You're not stressing as much. Um, if there's a problem, we have more than enough time to figure out how to upload it and or get it to me. Um, so that's why it's mainly five days. It should really only take um, a couple hours to do um, at most. Um, so you should be okay. Maybe, I guess the related rates one should take about an hour, hour and a half. And then, yeah, I guess maybe three hours, not two. So it should be about three hours. Um, another related rates one is probably a little more difficult. Um, like I said, so this, that one will be curved. So don't worry about it too much. Just try your hardest. You'll be okay. Um, I believe in you. Um, what else? What else? Uh, for now, I think that's it. Um, was there anything else for the second midterm? Um, I should have written this down. You would think. Brain. Uh, no, oh, yeah, the second thing, that's what it was. Um, I'm gonna send it an announcement too. Uh, you probably should have gotten it, because I'm gonna send it on Sunday. Um, and the question is whether, uh, whether you want office hours whether office hours uh, we have two options I don't know if people are liking that it's on discord stay on discord and keep it kind of as is or I know a lot of other classes are using zoom for their office hours and they said it seems to be working fairly well would you prefer moving to zoom um I'll ask on Discord, I'll put up a little thing, um, a pinned message um, asking people for this. Um, you can either say, um, keep it on Discord and or keep move to Zoom um, with like a little yes button, like a little thumbs up, I guess. Um, I don't know how to draw a thumbs up. That's a thumb um, for, that's a horrible hand. I'm obviously not an artist. <laughs> um, and then a thumbs down for, yeah, I don't, anyway bad this is good this is bad uh this is discord zoom um i'll ask it on discord um there's over 100 people on there um so i think that'll be a good representative sample um i know it'll mainly be the people who are on discord so it'll be slightly skewed but um so i'll take that into account um okay so let's start the lesson for today uh, if you have questions, oh yeah. So if you have questions on the midterm, obviously I can't answer your questions on the midterm. 
uh, because it's a midterm, right? Like you're supposed to be doing this by yourself, trying to figure it out. Um, so any question that looks like a midterm related question, I will not answer during this time. Um, you kind of had all weekend, you had all of last week. Um, so I won't be answering questions that look similar to um, the midterm question. Um, so just a heads up. Um, yeah, if there's questions, feel free to email and or ask on Discord. Um, okay, so let's start. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start on looking at kind of um, how do we go backwards from a derivative. Um, so basically, when we talk a lot about derivatives, right, so I have some function, um, I can graph it, right, so I have some function, I don't know. And when I talk about the derivative, a lot of times what I'm talking about, um, like the way we interpret it is going to be the slope at a line, right? Um, and so we have some f of x, and this goes into some derivative f prime of x. And so now the question we're going to ask ourselves, how do we go backwards? How, if I know my f prime of x, how do I find my f of x? And that's basically what we're going to solve. Um, what we're going to do is um, we call f um, we call f a function f is called an antiderivative of a function f. So here, capital F is going to be the antiderivative. Little f is going to be the um, regular derivative. Um, this is the case. So on an interval i, if the derivative of big F is equal to little f for every x in i. Um, so this should be something we can do with some problems, right? Um, so for example, 3x squared, right? This is something we we should be able to do, right? If you think about it, x cubed, if I take the derivative, I get 3x squared, right? Um, and so it's, that's a very easy example. So we have x cubed. But we don't just have x cubed, right? Because I can add I can add 1, and this will disappear, right? I can change this to 2, and that'll be okay. I can change this to 3, and all of these are just going to go to 0. So I can add any constant here. So what we do is normally say plus c, where c is a constant. Because when I take the derivative of a constant, it goes to 0. So really, this is a general antiderivative. So what does this look like? Notice how these are all the same. So here we have x cubed here in um, gray. So this one is x cubed. And then each one is slightly different. So this orange one is x cubed plus 1. This is plus 1. This one is plus 2. The red one is plus 3. Uh, the purple one is minus 1, the orange one is minus 2, and this black one is minus 3. And what you're going to notice is that since the derivative is nothing more than the slope, notice how the slope at every point of these graphs is exactly the same, right? So let me choose a color that kind of doesn't exist anywhere. These all exist. Um, I guess I'll use this one. This is, No, that's the blue one. Erg. Uh, we'll do brown, I guess. Brown. Okay. So notice how at zero, right, our slope at all of these points are the same. They're all zero, right? Um, or even at one. If I look at one, the slope here, at one, at one, they're all exactly, I mean, this one you can't see, the same. So it's the same at minus one. Yeah, and so that's the point. That's why we can have this plus c. When we add plus c, basically we're just taking this graph and we're moving it up and down. So we're not actually ever changing the slope. We're keeping the graph exactly as is. We're just moving it up and down. So the, der the derivative is going to stay the same. And that's why this plus c um, doesn't really do much for us. I know this is a confusing topic for a lot of people for why we have a plus c. Um, hopefully that helps explain it. Um, and so, yeah, so, um, but how do we know this is it? So we have all of these, right? We have x cubed plus c. But how do we know this is all there is? How do we know there's not some other function 
that when we take the derivative, we get 3x squared. Um, and so this is what we're basically asking. How do we know? Uh, how do we know there's not some other function? Um, and actually, it's not an easy thing to prove. Um, this is something you have to actually show that there's no other function that when you take the derivative will give you this, right? So that these are um, that these are literally all the functions, these ones. So you have to actually prove that this is the case. Um, and so basically what um, a theorem that was shown back in the day, um, where is, let's do red for theorem, um, that was shown back in the day, is that if we have an antiderivative f, so if f, big F, is an antiderivative of some function f on an interval i, so remember antiderivative, what we're saying is f prime of x is equal to f of x, right? That's just the definition. Then the most general antiderivative of f on i is given by f of x plus c, where c is some constant. Uh, is an arbitrary constant, arbitrary constant, right? So basically, this c is allowing us, allowing the graph to move up and down, yeah? So let's look at some examples. What are the most general antiderivatives for the following function? So basically, I'm asking is, what function do I need when I take the derivative, I'll get the function here on the left. Um, okay, so cosine, um, if you remember, this is just the derivative of sine, right? So here we have f of x is equal to sine of x, but I also need plus c because I'm being asked the most general. So this is because f prime of x, right? Uh, f prime of x is equal to cosine of x which is equal to f of x. Okay, so let's look at something a little harder. How about x to the n, when n is not equal to one? Uh, this should say minus one, when x is not equal to minus one. Minus one, that's a typo. Um, well, this one's a little harder. Uh, or minus one or zero. It can't be zero because if it's just zero, yeah. Uh, that's okay, actually. So it can be zero. Um, so, yeah, it can't be minus one. Um, okay, so what is this one? This one's a little more complicated. Um, and this one you're going to have to think about a little. Try to think about it for a second. And what you should be thinking is this is a polynomial. So normally when I look at polynomials, right, if I have x to the n, this goes to n times x to the n minus 1. So right now, here, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to change things because here I have an n minus 1 and here I have an n, right? So let's actually add 1 to this n. And I get n plus, that's not an n, n plus 1 times x to the n. So all I'm really missing is this n plus 1. So really what I can do is I can divide by n plus 1 everywhere, and then these will cancel, and I get my x to the n. So what I have is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. If this part here on the right was confusing, don't worry about it. Let's actually look at how this works. So I'm going to get rid of this. Nope, I want you deleted. Bye. Uh, so let's let's look at this, right? So um, f prime of x, what is this? So remember, x of n to the n plus 1, we bring the exponent down. So I bring the exponent down. I subtract 1 from the exponent. And I still have this n plus 1 on the bottom because it's a constant. And this constant part disappears. It goes to 0. These cancel, and we get x to the n. So here you're going to have to think about these things yourself. These take a lot of thought. Um, but luckily, we've seen a lot of derivatives, so it shouldn't be too, too hard. Um, 
And then we said, so one more example, x to the minus one, right? So we said n can't be minus one. So what happens when it is minus one? Now, if you think we've actually seen this function before, right? If you remember x to the minus one, this is just one over x. What function when we take the derivative gives us one over x? Exactly, so we have natural log of x. Um, but here, if you notice, I left little gaps and that's because we can actually take the absolute value. So natural log normally, when we look at the graph, looks like this. It's not defined when x is negative. Um, but if I were to take the absolute value of the negative, I would have this function. And that would actually give me exactly what I want, right? Um, so this actually turns out to be this. So it's slightly different. Um, but this is the unique function. Um, Okay, so the, these simple ones are okay, they're not too bad. But how can we complicate things? Uh, because we're get, we wanna complicate our lives. Our lives are just not hard enough with all the stress. So we're gonna add even more complications because this is how just life is. Mathematicians get bored. Um, years and years of boredom. And so what do we do? We're gonna think about what happens. So a lot of times, remember, we're going to look at our previous rules and see what we can determine about antiderivatives from these previous rules. So a lot of times when we're taking derivatives, remember if we have f of x plus g of x and I take the derivatives, right, I get f prime of x plus g prime of x, which basically means that I can kind of go backwards, right? So if I have f, f of x plus g of x, and if f of x and g of x are the antiderivatives, of f and g respectively, then f plus g of x is an antiderivative of f of x plus g of x. So this is basically stating this, right? So I'm stating, um, and this shouldn't be too hard to see, that f of x plus g of x, right? If I take the derivatives, I get f prime of x plus g prime of x, and these, this is just equal to f of x, this is equal to g of x, so we get f of x plus g of x. Okay, so let's look at an example. I have this big, long, complicated thing, yeah? Um, and you might be like, holy bananas around, this is way, 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 way too complicated. How the hell are we gonna remember all this? Slow down, take your time, and do step by step by step. So here, let's just look at this first one, yeah? So one over square root of one minus x squared, right? Because here we have a minus and here we have a plus. And so we can break it down. So this one, this, um, you're gonna have to remember, and this one's a little harder, that you're gonna have to remember that this is coming from arc sine of x. So here, this is almost no work to do. We just know that this is arc sine of x. Okay, how about minus two cosine x? Minus two cosine x. Well, cosine x we went over, right? This is just sine of x. Multiplying by constant doesn't really do anything. So we have minus two sine of x. But right, look at this, we've already done two out of the three. So this third one, let's actually make it even easier on us. This looks complicated, right? So let's make this easier. Let's split up our fraction. So here I made the cube root into x to the one third, um, and then I split up our fraction. So here, this is much easier to see what we should do, right? So we have two x cubed, this cancels. And then here we have, this should be plus x to the minus five thirds. Yeah, yeah. And so this should be easier, right? We already have, this is just number two from above. So this gives us two x to the four divided by four, right? In this case, I'm adding one to the exponent and I divide it by the new exponent. So here, what do I do? I add one to the exponent and I divide by the new exponent. Okay, so what does this give us? Um, and so what we have, 
f of x is equal to arc sine of x minus 2 sine of x. Here, let me clean this up first. Um, here we have x to the 4 over 2. These cancel, right? Um, and then here I can bring this 3 on top. And we get this. So here I will add plus x to the 4 over 2 minus 3x to the minus 2 thirds over 2. Um, and then, um, since I'm asking for all antiderivatives, I need to add some constant. And this is my solution. Okay. So that should be fairly easy to kind of see what's happening. Um, I would say, next problem, try it out. Test whether you can do it. Um, pause the video for a few seconds um, and see whether you can handle it or not. All right, welcome back. Um, and so what you should have done for this one, um, I'm not going to go over it, uh, but you should be able to see that your answer should be this. Minus natural log of x plus x cubed over 3. Uh, yeah. If you didn't get this, um, ask your friends in Discord. Um, ask a friend, try to figure it out. Remember, math I want you to do is a group, so you should be contacting people. Um, if you're not on the Discord for whatever reason um, and you don't have a friend to talk with, um, then just email me if you can't figure it out. That's okay. I can be your friend, um, although I hope I'm not your only friend in the world. Uh, Ask your parents or like your family or like um, your brothers and sisters or your outside friends. Like this should hopefully be common knowledge for some people, hopefully. Um, okay, so we tried this one. Um, let's look at another one.